So, again, good morning, everyone. Our topic for today is about computer ethics. <coughs> so, at the end of the lesson, you are expected to state the code of ethics of Filipino IT professional. Apply the principles formulated by Association of Computing Machinery in dealing with other people. <coughs> in making judgment in software design and all other dealings in the exercise of an IT profession, in the Ten Commandments of Computer Ethics, identify problems in a work scenario, be a morally responsible student, and manifest ethical thinking skills in analyzing and justifying computing issues. <clears throat> Professional Code of Ethics is a set of guidelines which are designed to set out acceptable behavior of member of a particular group, associations, or profession. <clears throat> a professional code of ethics states the principles and core values that are essential to the work of the particular occupational group. Practitioners in many professions subscribe to a code of ethics that governs their behavior. Laws do not provide a complete guide to ethical behavior. Just because an activity is not defined as illegal does not mean it is ethical. You also cannot expect a professional code of ethics to provide an answer to a very or every ethical dilemma. So no code can be definitive collection of behavioral standards. However, following a professional code of ethics can produce many benefits from the individual, the profession, and society as a whole. So, ethical decision-making. Adherence to the professional code of ethics means that practitioners use a common set of core values and beliefs as a guideline for ethical decision-making. The high standard of practice in ethical behavior, adherence to a code of ethics remind professional of the responsibility and duties that they may be tempted to compromise to meet the... <coughs> pressure, no? To meet the pressure. Okay. Of the day-to-day -day business. Okay. Uh, the code also defines behaviors that are acceptable and unacceptable to guide professionals or professionalism in their interaction with among uh, others, no? Strong codes of ethics have procedures for uh, censuring uh, professionals for serious violation with penalties that can include the loss of the right to practice. <clears throat> Such codes are the exemption, however, and few exist in the IT arena. Trust and respect from the general public. Public trust is built on the expectation that one professional will be behaved ethically. People must often depend on the integrity and good judgment of a professional to tell the truth, abstain from giving self-service advice, and offer warnings about the potential negative side effects of their actions. <clears throat> Thus, adherence to a code of ethics enhances trust in respect for professionals and their profession. <clears throat> evaluation benchmark a code of ethics provides an evaluation benchmark that a professional can use as means of self-assessment so peers of the professional can also use the code for recognition or censure <clears throat> the code of ethics of the Filipino IT professional so I will promote public knowledge understanding and appreciation of information technology so I will consider the general welfare and public welfare and public good in the performance of my work. I will advertise goods or professional services in a clear and truthful manner. I will comply and strictly abide by the intellectual property laws, patent laws, and other related laws in respect of information technology. I will accept the full responsibility for the work undertaken and, and, and utilize my skills <coughs> with competence and professionalism. I will truthful a statement of my areas of competence as well as the capabilities 
and qualities of my product and services. <clears throat> I will not disclose or use any confidential information obtained in course of professional duties without the consent of the parties concerned except when required by the laws. I will strive to attain the highest quality in both the products and services that offer. I will knowingly participate in the development of the information technology and another code of ethics. I will uphold and improve the IT professional standard through continuing profession in order to enhance the IT profession. <clears throat> the Code of Ethics of Association of Information Technology Professional. Okay, so the AITP, I acknowledge that I have an obligation to manage. Therefore, I shall promote the understanding of information processing methods and procedures to, man to management using every resource at my command. <clears throat> so that I have an obligation to my fellow members that I have an obligation to society and that I have an obligation to my college or university, that I have an obligation to my employer whose trust I hold, that I have an obligation to my country and I accept this obligation as personal responsibility and as a member of this association. I shall actively discharge this obligation and I dedicate myself to that end. <clears throat> So we have the principles for public, client and employers, products, judgment, management, profession, colleagues, principle of, of self. Then we identify the strength and weaknesses. <clears throat> now, for the strength, codes inspire the members of a profession to behave ethically. But the weaknesses, directives include in many codes, tend to be too general and too baggy. <clears throat> codes guide the members of the profession in ethical choices. So codes are not always helpful when two or more directives conflict. Strength codes educate the members of profession about their professional obligation. The weaknesses a professional coach direct directives are never complete or exhaustive. <clears throat> code discipline members when they violate one or more the coach directives. The weakness codes are ineffective in disciplinary matters. <clears throat> then code sens sensitize members of the profession to ethical issues and alert them to ethical aspect they otherwise might overlook. So directives in codes are sometimes inconsistent <clears throat> with one another. Codes inform the public about the nature and rules of the profession and the weakness code that do not always distinguish between microethics issues and microethic issues, micro and macro. Code enhance the profession in the eye of the <clears throat> public. Now, Actually, we have the Ten Commandments, okay? So the Ten Commandments of Computer Ethics have been defined by the Computer Ethics Institute. Here are interpretation of them. Thou shall not use a computer to harm other people. That is the first commandment. So it means to say that you use computer not to harm other people. <clears throat> Number two, thou shall not interfere with other people's computer work. Of course, you don't have a right to... Uh, manipulate or even to get some information from other computer. <clears throat> to shall not snoop around in other people's files. To shall not use a computer to steal. To shall not use a computer to bear false witness. To shall not use or copy software for which you have not paid. To shall not use other people computer resources without authorization. To shall not appropriate other people's intellectual output. Two shall not think about the social consequences of the program you write. And two shall use a computer in ways that show consideration and respect. <clears throat> okay. The hacking community's institution. So they believe that every individual should have the right to free speech in cyberspace. <clears throat> they believe that every individual should be free of worry when pertaining to oppressive government that controls cyberspace. They believe that democracy should exist in cyberspace to set a clear 
example as to how a functioning element of society can proper uh, <clears throat> with equal rights and free speech to all. Uh, they believe that the hacking is a tool that should and is used to test the integrity of networks that hold and safeguard our valuable information. They believe those sovereign countries in the world community that do not respect democracy should be punished. <clears throat> and they believe the art, music, politics, and crucial social elements of a world society can be achieved on the computer and in cyberspace. They believe that the hacking cracking and freaking are instruments that can achieve three crucial goals. What are those? <clears throat> Direct democracy in cyberspace, the belief that information should be free to all, and the idea that one can test and know the, the, the dangers of exploits of system that is store the individual's information. <clears throat> they believe that cyberspace should be governing body in the world community, where people of all nations and cultures can express their ideas and beliefs as to how our world politics should be played. <clears throat> they believe that there should be no governing social or political class or party in a cyberspace. They believe in free enterprise and frictions free capitalism. <clears throat> they believe in the open source movement fully, as no government should adopt commercial or price software for its shows that a government may be biased to something that does not prompt the general welfare of the technology market <clears throat> and slows or stops the innovation of other smaller companies' products. They believe that the technology can be viewed or wild, uh, wielded for the better placement of man mankind and environment we live in. And they believe that all sovereign countries in the world community should respect this principle and ideas <clears throat> released in this constitution. The above declared constitution is like the Bill of Rights which should be read in relation to the Ten Commandments. <clears throat> the computer ethics. Uh, when we say computer ethics, it is a new branch of ethics that is growing and changing rapidly as computer technology also grows and develops. <clears throat> The term computer ethics is open to interpretations both broad and narrow. On one hand, for example, computer ethics might be understood very narrowly as the efforts of professional philosophers to apply traditional ethical theories like utilitarianism, Kantianism, or other moral theories to issues regarding the use of computer technology. <clears throat> On the other hand, it is possible to construe computer ethics is a very broad way to include as well as standard of professional practices, code of conduct, <clears throat> aspect of computer law, public policy, corporate ethics, and even certain topics in the sociology and psychology of computing. <clears throat> what are the problems in computer ethics? Actually, a, a typical problem in computer ethics arises because there is a pa policy vacuum about how computer technology should be used. Computers provide us with new capabilities and this in turn give us new choices for action. Open, either no policies for conduct in these situations exist or existing policies seem inadequate. <clears throat> a central task of computer ethics is to determine what we should do in such cases that is formulate policies to guide our actions. <clears throat> One difficulty is that along with the policy vacuum, there is open a conceptual vacuum. Although a problem in computer ethics may seem clearly initially, <clears throat> a little reflection reveals a conceptual model. What is needed in such cases in an it is an anal analysis that provides a coherent conceptual framework within which to formulate a policy for actions. <clears throat> we have what we call local malleability. So computer can be shaped and molded to perform any activity that can be characterized in terms of inputs, outputs, and connecting logical operation. And this is the contrast of the majority of manufactured products. So for example, a car, a television, <clears throat> or refrigerator has well-defined and quite specific functions. The logic of computers, however, can be shaped in infinite ways through changes in hardware and software and in terms of their usage. 
<clears throat> this enables computer-based uh, technologies to, in, to exhibit tremendous flexibility. <clears throat> so what will be the impact on society? The extensive impact of computerization on society is clear. <clears throat> Naturally, in 1985, when Moore wrote his paper, relative few could foresee the extent of the impact, nor did anyone in, envisage the internet and the world wide web. Moore did, however, foresee the changing workplace workplace and the nature of work. <clears throat> Invisibility factor. <clears throat> An important fact about computers is the most of the time and under most conditions, computer operations are invisible. Moore identifies three kinds of invisibility that can have ethical significance. <clears throat> Number one is invisible abuse. Moore described the, uh, this as the international use of the invisible operations of a computer to engage in unethical conduct. Invisible programming values. <clears throat> These are values which, according to Moore, are embedded into a computer program. <clears throat> Invisible complex calculation in context. He argues that the issue is how much we should trust computers' invisible calculation. And this becomes a significant issue as the consequences grow in importance. Moral responsibility of a computer professional. <clears throat> Many computer professionals are software engineers or members of software engineering teams. <clears throat> Gotter Barn believes that because software engineers in their team are responsible for developing safety critical systems, they have significant opportunities to do good or cause harm, <clears throat> enable others to do good or cause harm, or influence others to do good or cause harm. <clears throat> Thus, Gutterburn Guter suggests that the rules and responsibility involved in the development of safety critical systems are differentiating factor. <clears throat> Kevin Boyer point out that the phrase safety critical system is often used to refer to computer system that can have a direct life threatening impact. Example of safety critical software applications typically include aircraft and air traffic control system, mass transportation system, nuclear reactors, missile, missile systems, and medical treatment system. <clears throat> now, the social network sites. The Philippines is still the social media capital of the world. No? So Filipinos are using social media platforms <clears throat> 53 hours a week. That's a whole 11 hours, more than the global average of 42 hours. In a global study called Wave 7, Filipinos are using social media to primarily connect with their families living overseas. As of this writing, there are more than, actually, more than 11 million Filipinos living outside the Philippines. <clears throat> social media has become a way for them to communicate with their families and friends instead of using overseas call in text, which are the traditional ways of communication. <clears throat> So what are the social networking ethical issues? <clears throat> Obviously, if we have hundreds of millions of users of one social networking site, it will be almost impossible that all of these users will abide by the golden rule. We Filipinos are very good in turning our national problems into a joke expressed in a picture message of a published in social networking site. Another uh, example, if other the air, air, airport brawl incident between Muntulpo and the Santiago's. And a netizen post the following, uh, some pictures depicting the move the Avengers. <clears throat> Posting a picture message. The, uh, the pictures may be just fine because it is entertaining. But what if your friend posts your picture, which to your mind should not be seen by others? Will that be okay with you? Hence, as a rule of thumb, netizens should not post a picture which may be offensive to some persons, include in, the pic in some pictures. <clears throat> and of course, if the picture is on its face, a good picture, we do not need to get the consent of everyone. <clears throat> if we ask someone to join us in a photo shoot, <clears throat> 
do we need to ask his permission to allow us to upload the said pictures on any social media site? Not anymore. This is due to the fact that once you ask someone popular, say, Manny Pacquiao to join us in a photo shoot, he is aware that we are going to upload the same, that's the, the same picture in our Facebook and other social networking site. However, if we take a photo or video of a private person without his consent, it is not proper to publish the same in the internet subject to some exemption. To illustrate, suppose you feel asleep inside the library and one of your classmates take a picture of you and posted it in the Facebook, of course, you will get furious. The act of your classmate is unethical and improper. <clears throat> some exemption, if that taking of picture or video involves news of the day and other miscellaneous facts having the character of mere items of press information, example is the videotaping of man who jumped from the bridge in EDSA. If the unauthorized picture taking and or videotaping is done for the general welfare of the public, <clears throat> So then taking picture of public personalities in a public. Okay. So I think that's it for the social issues and professional ethics. The topic about computer ethics. Now, <clears throat> I hope that I can share now the video. So, Assalamu alaikum, this video will be liked and subscribe to our channel and subscribe to our channel. How are you? I hope you all are fine there. Now, everybody is well aware that if you have to succeed, you just follow some rules and principles in life. So, a person following proper ethics in life always prosper. So, today also we are just going to see in the slides the rules of computer ethics we have to follow to do the work. So, let's start with this chapter, Computer Ethics for Class 8. Now, first of all, in the first slide, it is shown what is computer ethics. Computer ethics care. Now, ethics is a set of moral principles that govern the behavior of a group or individual. Therefore, computer ethics you can say it is a set of moral principles that regulate the use of computers. Okay? Now, ethic improves one's ability to reason about right or wrong. आप डिसाइड कर सकते हो कि कौन सी चीज़ गलत है कौन सी चीज़ सही है सो एथिक्स मीन्स टू टेक द प्रॉपर डिसीजन ठीक है ना नेक्स्ट वन इज अ सॉफ्टवेयर पायरेसी सॉफ्टवेयर पायरेसी वॉट इज इट एलिगल कॉपिंग ऑफ कंप्यूटर सॉफ्टवेयर इट इज कॉल्ड सॉफ्टवेयर पायरेसी ना वी हैव थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर पायरेसी हेयर सॉफ्ट लिफ्टिंग सॉफ्ट लिफ्टिंग अपलोडिंग एंड डाउनलोडिंग एंड काउंटर फिटिंग Turn by turn, we'll just see these things. Now, first is soft lifting piracy. Now, this means sharing a program with someone who is not authorized to authorize na ho by the license agreement to use it. Okay, to authorize na ho, jinko license na mila, that is called as software piracy. Okay. Next is uploading and downloading piracy. This means. इलीगल कॉपिंग ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर इलीगल तरीके से किसी सॉफ्टवेयर के सॉफ्टवेयर को कॉपी कराना विदाउट द परमिशन वाइल कनेक्टेड टू अ नेटवर्क बिना परमिशन काउंटर फिटिंग पायरेसी ना दिस मीन्स इलीगली कॉपिंग लीगल सॉफ्टवेयर लीगल सॉफ्टवेयर जो होते हैं उनको इलीगल तरीके से कॉपी करना और दूसरों को बेचना एंड सेलिंग इट इन अ वे टू मेक अ रियल थिंग अपनी मर्जी से उनको बेचना दैट इज काउंटर फिटिंग पायरेसी नेक्स्ट स्लाइड में आई शोन यू वेज टू कंट्रोल सॉफ्टवेयर पायरेसी कौन से तरीके हैं जिनसे हम पायरेसी को रोक सकते हैं फर्स्ट वन इज द कॉपी राइट न कॉपी राइट इज द राइट गारंटेड बाई लॉ 
to the creator for his or her original work. Okay. Legal action can be taken if someone copies the work without the permission of the author. अगर कोई चीज कॉपी राइट नहीं है उसकी परमिशन के बगैर ऑथर की परमिशन के बगैर अगर आप कॉपी कर रहे हो सो दैट दैट विल बी इलीगल ठीक है नेक्स्ट इज पेटेंट नेक्स्ट वे इज पेटेंट वन मस्ट हैव एन ऑफिशियल राइट टू यूज और सेल अ सॉफ्टवेयर आपके पास ऑफिशियल राइट होनी चाहिए सॉफ्टवेयर बेचने की या उसे सेल करने की ठीक है नेक्स्ट इज द ट्रेडमार्क Now what is trademark? This is a logo or symbol which is printed on commodities of a business. कोई भी business आप कर रहे हो उसके ऊपर कोई trademark बना हुआ है Then only it is legal software. ठीक है Then what are the net एटिक्यूटी that you have to follow while working on the net? First one is do not hurt others' feeling and respect the user on the other end. किसी के किसी की फीलिंग को आप बिना मतलब से ना हट करो ठीक है देन डू नॉट फिक्स एनी मीटिंग विद एनी स्ट्रेंजर किसी स्ट्रेंजर के साथ कोई मीटिंग फिक्स नहीं करनी है देन टाइप द आंसर ओनली आफ्टर केयरफुली रीडिंग द इनकमिंग मैसेजेस इनकमिंग मैसेजेस जो आपके पास आ रहे हैं वो देख कर ध्यान से आप उनको रिस्पॉन्ड करो यस है तो यस करो नो है तो नो करो Then keep your messages short and to the point. जब भी आप कोई मैसेज कर रहे हो जस्ट कीप इट इन शॉर्ट एंड टू द पॉइंट देन नेक्स्ट स्लाइड में जिस गिवन है वॉट ई मेल बॉम्बिंग ई मेल बॉम्बिंग क्या है नो इट रेफर्स टू द सेंडिंग ऑफ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ मेल जब आप बहुत सारी लार्ज नंबर ऑफ मेल्स भेजते हो किसी विक्टिम को ठीक है जब वो क्रैश हो जाती है दैट इज ई मेल बॉम्बिंग Then online gambling. What is online gambling? Now there are several sites on the web. Web के ऊपर बहुत सारी sites हैं which allow people to gamble with real money. जुआ खेलना ठीक है With real money or just for fun, they are just playing this online gambling. Next is प्रोन पोर्नोग्राफी नाउ दिस इज एस्टिमेटेड एट हाफ ऑफ द इंटरनेट ट्रैफिक इज पोर्नोग्राफिक Now इसमें क्या होता है कि इट डिस्क्राइब्स द पीपल इन सच अ वे दैट दे फील ऑफेंसिव आप किसी कोई भी पिक्चर को कुछ इस तरीके से पेश करते हैं कि लोग उसे देख कर ऑफेंसिव फील करते हैं ठीक है देन क्राइम यूजिंग कंप्यूटर वट आर द क्राइम्स यूजिंग कंप्यूटर स्टीलिंग लैपटॉप कंटेनिंग ओनर इंफॉर्मेशन ऑन इट्स हार्ड डिस्क इज सेम है स्टीलिंग इंफॉर्मेशन दैट कंटेन्स पेपर्स ऑफ ओनर्स इंफॉर्मेशन ठीक है किसी का लैपटॉप चुराना देन अनऑथराइज चेंजिंग ऑफ डाटा बिना बताए डाटा चेंज कर देना एग्जांपल चेंजिंग एन ऑफिशियल रिकॉर्ड ऑफ अ स्टूडेंट्स वर्क या फिर स्कूल ट्रांसक्रिप्ट बिना बताए द क्रिमिनल रीड्स कॉन्फिडेंशियल इंफॉर्मेशन बट डाटा इज नाइदर डिलीटेड और चेंज क्रिमिनल क्या करता है कई बार कि कॉन्फिडेंशियल इंफॉर्मेशन रीड कर देता है बट वहाँ से डाटा को ना डिलीट करता और ना ही चेंज करता नेक्स्ट इज मेजर रीजन्स ऑफ कंप्यूटर क्राइम्स ना मेजर रीजन्स ऑफ कंप्यूटर क्राइम्स में फर्स्ट इज लो डिटेक्शन रेट इज देयर नॉट टेकन सीरियसली और लिटिल अंडरस्टूड बाई द पुलिस या कोर्ट्स ठीक है पुलिस समझ ही नहीं पाती कि कहाँ पर क्या क्राइम हो रहा है नॉट वेल डिफाइंड लॉस लॉस के तरीके वेल डिफाइंड नाव देन हार्ड टू डिफाइन डेटा वैल्यूज ठीक है दीज आर द मेजर रीजन्स ऑफ कंप्यूटर क्राइम्स then what are the protective measures that you have to follow the first one is the authorization now what is this it is the act of giving permission to use confidential documents theek okay? hai then authentication what is this user will be considered authentic when he or she gives his or her true information for using the data theek okay? hai then firewall aapke computer mein firewall bhi hona chahiye kyunki This prevent unauthorized internet users from accessing private networks connected to the internet, and you should not show your password to anybody. Do not download the files and software by unreliable means. Open the email attachment only if you full if you have full confidence on the sender, and always use antivirus software. So thank you this was all about this line
Okay, so that this will be the some computer crimes uh, as discussed by uh, So this time I will share the Ten Commandments. Okay, so watch and listen for the... Ethics. And notice an increase in ethically important considerations ethics. on ethics cases that involve the use of computers, and was later on convinced that this phenomenon required its own branch of applied ethics, known as computer ethics. Despite the multitude of concerns relating to computer ethics, there were four main concerns crime, failure, protection, and privacy. This was taken into consideration by the Computer Ethics Institute of Washington, D.C. and thus laid down the Ten Commandments of Computer Ethics in 1992. So what are the Ten Commandments of Computer Ethics? Number 1. Thou shalt not use a computer to harm other people. Imagine being asked to program a helping robot, but instead you program it to kill and made other inventions alongside it to bring about mass destruction. This act violates the first commandment. Number two, thou shalt not interfere with other people's computer work. Let's say one of your co-workers' performance was better than yours, and due to the hatred you felt, you program a virus that destroyed all the valuable files and documents of your co-worker. Number three, thou shalt not snoop around in other people's files. Let's say you are working alone in the office and found yourself stuck in one of the tasks that you have been assigned with. With not much integrity, you proceeded to open your co-worker's computer and read every work file they had to help you finish your task. This violates the right of your co-worker as well as the third commandment. Number four, thou shalt not use a computer to steal. A notable real-life case happened in 2009 when Miami-based hacker Albert Gonzalez stole tens of millions of credit card and debit card numbers from over 250 financial institutions. This was considered as one of the biggest fraud cases in U.S. history and Gonzalez pled guilty in December of the same year. Number 5. Thou shalt not use a computer to bear false witness. There has been an uprising in the creation of deep fakes recently, and it has mainly been used for thematic purposes. However, falling into the wrong hands and minds, this can stir up global concerns and spread falsified information, especially to those unaware of it. I'm not Adele. Number 6. Thou shalt not use or copy software for which you have not paid. Some people who have a deeper knowledge in software piracy and theft tend to download a crack or pre-activated version of a paid software that they choose, and some have the guts to make a profit out of these pirated softwares. Number 7. Thou shalt not use other people's computer resources without authorization. A good scenario of violation would be finding out your co-worker's email address and password. One day, you decided to access their account and pretended to be them while accessing some of their resources without their consent. Number 8. Thou shalt not appropriate other people's intellectual output. Imagine at work, you were asked to present in front of the company's board members, and you presented content, text, and images that were from the website you saw on the internet. Without proper credit and reference, this can be subject to copyright infringement, especially if the content you copied online was not free for public or commercial use. Number 9. Thou shalt think about the social consequences of the program you write. 
Despite years of training to write programs that help make lives easier, there are still cases wherein programs are written to disrupt balance in the society. Computer professionals are compelled to avoid writing this kind of programs in adherence to the professional code of conduct. Number 10. Thou shalt use a computer in ways that show consideration and respect. Flaming and other sorts of cyberbullying are examples of a clear violation of this commandment. Instead, what we can do is preserve a harmonious and peaceful community free from negativity and threats. The Ten Commandments of Computer Ethics is not enough to cover the wide variety of ethical concerns in the usage of computers, but despite the ambiguity, this can be used as a basic reference on how we both professionals and non-professionals ought to act responsibly whether we are offline or online. Okay, so this will cover the chapter two, week two of our <coughs> discussions about computer ethics. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, I have an assignment last time, so be sure that you'll be able to pass uh, your assignments. Then uh, I will give you the additional assessment task for this topic. I will post it to our FP group. <clears throat> Thank you and see you later to our uh, web programming, right? So we have web programming later. Thank you and goodbye.